So, the big question is this. How are ambitious people like us, who don't have a lot of resources, did not go to Ivy League colleges, were not born into wealth, how do we become resourceful enough? Use our creativity, our dedication, and a little bit of crazy to bootstrap our way to realizing our dreams. Whether it is launching a new company, launching a new app, or making it to the top of the corporate ladder. That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answers. Uh, hi, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of uh, Bootstrapping Your Dreams Show. The title of today's interview is What It Takes to Identify, Start, and Build a Successful Business and the Mistakes Every Entrepreneur or Professional Needs to Avoid. My name is Manoj Agarwal, and today I'm talking with author, coach, entrepreneur, and business expert Marvin Wilson about common mistakes that stop most entrepreneurs or professionals dead in their tracks, really, before they even get started. So welcome, Marvin. Thank you, Manoj. It's a pleasure to be on the show and to share what I can with your audience. (laughs) Awesome. So Marvin is an expert when it comes to entrepreneurship, and uh, he has built several successful businesses. He has uh, graciously consented to this interview to share his extensive knowledge and experience to help us avoid the most damaging mistakes in the field of entrepreneurship. Uh, This interview should help every entrepreneur understand how to identify business opportunities and exploit them successfully. So Marvin, thank you again for joining us. Uh, Let's jump right in. Okay. So so my first set of questions is going to be about your background and experience in the field of business and entrepreneurship so that our audience can understand who you are, where you're coming from, and how you can relate to where they are right now. Sure. And after that, uh, we'll jump into some specific mistakes when it comes to building su- uh, successful businesses um, so that our audience can understand how to avoid the trouble that stops so many people. Good. All right. So... Can you tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of your background, education, and experience in the field of entrepreneurship? Okay, I uh, I never thought I would be an entrepreneur. I, I went to college on a music scholarship, a voice major. Uh, I was a singer, musician, a thespian minor. Wow. And uh, this was, mind you, uh, I'm an old hippie, so this was back in the, in the uh, late 60s. And... Uh, I was one of those people that tuned in, turned on, and dropped out uh, when the hippie generation came to be. So after two years of college, I realized they were, the school I went to was Central Michigan University. And what they do is they teach you how to be teachers. Okay. And I decided I didn't want to be a teacher. I was getting enamored with the idea of being a rock and roll star. Uh-huh. So so I uh, I dropped out of school after two years and joined a rock and roll band and spent the next 15 years in the music industry. Wow. And, uh, and and a lot of musicians, any artists, don't realize that they're really in a business. You know, if, if you're selling your service or your skill or whatever, that's yeah, a yeah. business. That's a business. Yeah. That's why a lot of bands fail, because they don't know how to handle their money and uh, capitalize their business. Like a every band should have at least one person who knows has, has a good business head on them. But anyway, that that went on for uh, about 15 years. I never made it big time. Uh, Had a lot of fun. (laughs) (laughs) But got married and there was uh, one kid, another on the way. And uh, I was getting tired of the whole disco cover. You know, if you don't make it in music, you got to play in bars and play cover tunes for young people to get drunk to and, you know, have sex. So... I got tired of that and I wasn't making enough money. So I got out of that and uh, I went into uh, a, a just a bootstrap business. Really, I, I had some carpentry skills uh-huh. and I joined with another person who had, uh, I was a side note here. At the time I was studying Zen Buddhism Wow! and, and one of the other uh, students was a, was a, a very skilled carpenter and the two of us, uh, we just, we produced these flyers. This was back before the internet and all that. We produced these flyers and pasted them all over the neighborhood, claiming we could do anything, mm-hmm. which which we couldn't. But <laughs> we'd, get the, which we'd, we'd get the job, then we'd go buy one of those Sunset magazines and figure out how to do it, and then we'd go do it. And that's how I started my first business. I just 
backed into it really and yeah. uh, and we can go more into detail i'm sure you have other questions but that's yeah. i went on from there and i'll talk about how that bills business was built and mistakes i made and the success yeah. i had and all that okay. other businesses i've had have been in network marketing mm -hmm. and uh, and i'm currently just at my ripe old ripe young age of 69 starting a new enterprise which we'll talk about later <laughs> awesome that's great uh, what a story um, all right. So, uh, as you already mentioned, uh, you had uh, uh, formal training in in a very different field. So that just illustrates the point that anybody can enter the field of business. You don't really need a formal education or training. All you need is uh, a good plan, somebody to guide you, and uh, and execution. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So uh, let's um, move on. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, early uh, success. Like, uh, was it an overnight success, or you had to struggle through it? Um, uh, yeah, give us some insight about uh, that early phase of your uh, career in business. I had to work really hard for it, and uh, but I I do it, it, the show we want to talk about identifying a good business to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that 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 bootstrap startup carpenter business I told you about. It wasn't long before uh, my partner and I realized that um, we were that we were getting lots of work, and it was easy to get work. And if you did good work, you'd get referrals. And people seemed to have. So I started looking at it from a business point of view, and I started realizing this was this was in the seventies, uh, yeah, late seventies, mid eighties. There was a housing boom going on. Mm -hmm. Where if you had a hundred thousand dollar house, it was worth a hundred thousand. Next year it was worth one hundred and twenty five. Next year it was worth a hundred. Every five years your homes were doubling in value, mm -hmm. and it was a bubble, mind you. It wasn't yeah. real money. It was just uh, money is a funny thing. It's what we can, you know, we all decide this is worth this much, this is worth that much. But the the industry, the marketplace, was deciding the homes were improving uh, in value. So. Uh, that gave rise to the boom in uh, taking out, you know, refinancing, second mortgages, third mortgages. Suddenly people had all this money to spend. And so they, they were able to remodel their kitchen or put the sunroom on or finish the basement or add a second floor. My goodness, I, uh, I was doing at one point $120,000 kitchens. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so when I... When I realized that, I decided I, this is more than just the two of us can handle. As a matter of fact, I bought my partner out and went into business for myself okay. and start, started hiring people because I couldn't handle all the work coming in. So that's how, it, it, and then that built and built and built until at one point uh, I had 14 tradespeople in the field and off staff of five, you know, an architectural designer, a bookkeeper, a secretary, a, couple superintendents and we were doing millions of dollars a year in the home wow. business and this and was I, back in 70s you said right uh, bad, you know, i'd say from the mid 70s through the early 90s is wow. when this boom was taking place mm -hmm. listen in detail in a minute here uh, uh keys to keys to staying successful and mm -hmm red flags about what you're not doing right that could cause a failure yeah, yeah. because I eventually I had to close that business down and I can tell you why when we get to that. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, that's uh, that sounds familiar. Like, you know, this happened uh, again in 2008 and uh, 2000, yeah. well, 2007. So the cycle keeps repeating, I guess. Uh, anyway, let's move on. So uh, let's dive into those mis mistakes and uh, get them uh, cleared up for people. So what is the number one mistakes entrepreneurs make uh, in starting a successful business? Well, Manu, there's, there's so many of them, it's hard to pick one. But if I had to pick one, I guess I would say it's not capitalizing your business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and to clarify, uh, I mean, starting to elevate your lifestyle. When you're starting to have, pro uh, you're, you're profiting and being successful, you start elevating your lifestyle right away. Yeah, That's yeah. a big mistake rather than capitalizing the company first. Yeah. It, and, and I can explain why this mistake is so easy for people to make and why they do it so often because 
especially for first time entrepreneurs. It's the first yeah. time you've ever had success. The first time you've had more money than you've ever had before. <clears throat> it's natural, excuse me, to want to, okay, I, hey, I can get the bigger house. I can buy the new car. You know, we can start eating out at restaurants. We can take those exotic vacations. Mm -hmm. But you're setting yourself up for a problem. Anything can and often does happen in business. Yeah, and yeah. if you're not capitalized, you know, when the poop hits the fan, you're going to be yeah. in you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, and that's what I was saying to earlier. Uh, that's the mistake I made. So I learned this from the hard way people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because when that housing boom popped and all of a sudden people had uh, a $400,000 mortgage on a home that was no longer worth, it was only worth 200,000. Now yeah, yeah. the home improvement isn't, she just tanked. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't have enough capital to, uh, to sustain that. So I, you know, I had to close the doors on that and figure out something else to do. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, that's a very important one for sure. Um, so what should they do instead? So, in, you know, how can they capitalize? Are you, uh, are you recommending that they take out a loan to capitalize their business? Let's say, you know, somebody no, no, wants no, to no, start. No. Okay. no, 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 no. Uh, you start making all this money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead of spending it on your lifestyle, throw it away in the bank, pay your, t I would recommend that a business has at least six months up to, even better up to a year of money of operating capital in the bank, taxes paid, mm -hmm. save for a rainy day. So when the, uh, you know, with the poop hits the fan and all of a sudden there's no work coming in or there's some sort of disaster or, or, or you know, you're hit with a lawsuit or, or anything like that. Yeah, You've yeah. got enough operating cap capital to keep the lights on, to keep your key employees employed. Uh, you know, the, the bills are getting paid and you're still there six months later after you've survived it. Yeah. So um, that that's a very good point. But what, what uh, recommendation do you have for people who are just getting started? So, you know, um, let's say somebody is sitting in their basement listening to this right now and they want to start a business and they don't have a lot of capital. They just want to bootstrap the business. Um, what can they do to make sure, you know, they get off on the right track? Well, first of all, uh, do your homework, do your research. Uh, a good business startup is one that's going to solve a problem or meet a need in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, uh, you know, uh, you can see this with the, my generation, the aging baby boomers, mm -hmm. uh, where you see uh, walk-in bathtubs and hearing aids and all these different types of things that cater to my generation. Uh, but find something that's just look at your life and look what's going on in the marketplace. Where is their problem? Where is the service that's not good enough or a service that's not being provided? Mm -hmm. Where is there problems that need to be solved? If you can solve a problem, if you can produce a service or a product that solves a problem and fulfills a need that's not being fulfilled, that's a good startup idea. Mm -hmm. And obviously you have to do one. If you don't have a lot of capital, it has to be something you can start with very little capital. Good, good. All right, great. Okay, so let's uh, move on. Uh, what is uh, what is the mistake that most often causes uh, entrepreneurs to fail completely <laughs> while build, building businesses? Uh, I'll tell you one, mm -hmm. and that is uh, thinking you can do everything yourself. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. People have, here's a common mistake people who have a skill make. Like, I was a good carpenter, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, but being a good carpenter does not mean you know how to run a carpentry business. You might be a, an excellent cook, chef level cook. That doesn't mean you're qualified to own and operate a restaurant. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, they're two completely different things. It's like we talked about earlier, the music business. Just because you can play the guitar well doesn't mean you know how to, you know, uh, operate a, a musician band and make mm -hmm. it a, a good in business world. So that's a mistake. And uh, it, you know, it, it's 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 natural to think that because I'm good at uh, you might be a great doctor doesn't mean you can open your own physician practice. Yeah, yeah. So I would say that's one uh, one mistake that can make you fail. If 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 you don't know how to run the business that's producing the product that you can produce, mm -hmm. it will it will nine times out of ten it'll fail. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so what should they do? Like what, how can they go about, um, you know, getting the right help or uh, getting the right advice? What will you recommend them do instead? Well, um, back to my story, when I was starting the home improvement business, at a certain point, I realized I don't really know how to run a business the size of which I'm aiming at. Mm -hmm. So I started going to seminars. You know, I would fly down to uh, Dallas. I went to Atlanta, Georgia, and attend these three, four, five-day seminars and get coached. And at one point, when my business was starting to grow, I brought, I hired, I brought in a business consultant who worked okay. with me for several months and taught me how to write a spreadsheet and how to project cash flow projections and things yeah, like yeah. that. Uh, but uh, the other thing you can do, and I highly recommend this, if you're, let's say you're, you got a skill and you've got a product you can produce, but you're not a business person, either hire or partner with someone who is a good business person to run the business for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That that will ensure your success. Yeah. Or maybe they can, well, if, if the business grows uh, uh, big enough, they can hire somebody to to take care of the business side of things, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Or, or you can partner with someone and say, look, yeah, yeah. you run the business, I'll produce the product. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and it works. But if you're going to partner, make sure it's someone you can trust. Someone. Yeah, who, for you know, sure. Yeah. 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 Um, besides that, like, uh, do you have any tools or insights or apps or websites that you recommend that uh, people can go to, like, for for this type of advice or help? Uh, just just Google it. There's all kinds of things online that that you you can even get college credits taking business yeah. courses online, and and and. The other thing I would recommend is when your business starts growing is to uh, get a good CPA, mm -hmm. hire a good CPA and uh, give that person enough power to dictate to you. Here's how, here's, here's your allowance. Here's yeah. how much money you can spend yeah. on your lifestyle. And here's what, here's what the rest goes to the business. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, all right. So um, what is another mistake that entrepreneurs make uh, where they think in their mind that they are actually doing the right thing? but they don't realize it's a mistake. Hiring family members. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> you know, it seems logical. Like, you know, like I started the carpentry business for my family to, uh -huh. to increase the wealth of my family. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, uh, and I made this mistake too, people. Uh, I hired my daughter and my wife. Uh -huh. And the, the problem there is you just can't be, a, you can't have the same objectivity yeah, yeah. with family members as you can with someone who's not family that you hired based on their skill level and their expertise and so forth. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, you know, a kid, you know, they, they can be lazy, late to the job, leave early. Dad's not going to fire me. Right. You know, yeah, for sure. and that causes not only problems for the business, but problems at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's disastrous. Just don't do it unless, unless, you know, there are rare exceptions. I've seen family businesses that do work, but usually unless your family are all business people and they all understand the importance the business has over the family, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's not all business is business. It's yeah. not love business yeah. business. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to love your business. And that you, you love your family too, but you have to compartmentalize. Yeah. And the two don't usually mix. That's that's a good piece of advice right there. Um, all right. Um, are there any other major mistakes that you want to uh, uh, make our uh, viewers and listeners aware of uh, as when it comes to starting a business or growing it? Just again, I I would really just recap. Identify something that needs needs to be produced or serviced. Yeah. Uh, as you grow, capitalize the company. Uh, hire only competent people. When you start growing, you need employees to interviews, check their references, their resumes, hire based on experience and, and uh, qualifications, not bloodlines. Uh, don't think you can do everything yourself. You know, as you grow, don't don't be so greedy. You want to wear every hat in the business so you don't have to pay anybody any money. No, yeah. that won't work. You spread the wealth around and you will, you know, the larger the pie, the larger the slice for everyone. Yeah. Okay. If you try to eat the whole pie yourself, you'll just get fat and die. Yeah. All right. 
Um, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Marvin, for such a great interview. I'm sure all the entrepreneurs in our audience have a much clearer understanding of the mistakes people make about starting and building successful businesses and how to avoid them. So thank you so much for sharing your expertise and experience so graciously. Uh, now, before I let you go, can you tell us a little bit about your services, your coaching, and uh, uh, how you help uh, other entrepreneurs achieve their uh, dreams? Well, right now, my main focus uh, on which is uh, I have a partner, and uh, we identified a need in the marketplace, uh, which is in the publishing industry. Okay. Uh, I have, as you said, as as we talked earlier, I have a history of being a musician, a starving artist, you know, someone trying to make it in the music, trying to get a big publishing company to, to sign you up is next to impossible unless you're somehow connected. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if you do get signed up, they're going to own you. They're going to tell you what you're going to play, what you're going to sing, where you're going to perform and how much money. And they're going to make the giant share of the, of the money. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard for struggling I mean, there, for, for every successful big name artist that you know, there's thousands of struggling artists that are just as good who have, never have a chance. Mm -hmm. So we started a website that promotes little known but worthy up and coming artists. And it's a free, no strings attached offer. Nice. Uh, if, you, if you're an artist out there or have a family member or a friend, please tell them to go to publishingforthepeople.com. Yeah. Uh, it's publishing the number four which stands for a win, 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 win program. And I'll explain that. Publishing the number for the people, publishingforthepeople.com. Because what we do is we offer artists the chance to sign up to be one of our artists. Uh, there's no strings attached. You can still self-publish. You can still publish anywhere else you want, but you're, it's free to join our website. And then we let the people uh, decide who, who, you know, we. They decide who they want, not some big publishing company. We put the artists out there, then we spread it around social media. The artist spreads it out on his Facebook, Twitter. Please come to the website, check out my new ebook or my new CD or my D DVD. And we we reward the people for helping to promote our artists. And I'll explain how we do that. As I said, publishing for the number four stands for win, 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 win. The artists win because at no cost to them, they're getting published and they're getting promoted globally. They're getting exposure to people they never would have in their local hometown where they might be popular. And they have a chance to win thousands of dollars, or not win, earn thousands of dollars as people come onto the website and donate to their, we call it an art lot. Mm -hmm. well, let's say you have a DVD, a CD, you come onto our website, we set you up in the art lot that has 500 available downloads. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People come onto the website, they donate to your art lot, uh, $10 in return, they get a download of your CD, okay? And then the people uh, on the website, uh, we have this built-in social networking, uh, it's an extremely complex website, uh, something I could never do myself. I hired a great company out of India, uh, Swapnil Thakar, who runs Online Corporate India, I had to put a plug in for him. He built this website. It has almost a Facebook quality social network built into the website where people can play games, introduce other people to the site, help promote the artists. They earn points, and the people that, that do the most promoting get the most points. We we pay them. Mm -hmm. You know, they can win twenty, fifty, sixty, hundred, up to a thousand dollars for helping to promote our artists. So the artists win. The people win, they get exposure to fresh new talent they never would have seen before. They have a chance to earn cash prizes for helping us promote our artists. Charities win because we allocate 10% of all revenues raised to, to charities, which the people vote on. The people on the website vote which charities on the list, uh, the charity gets the most vote, gets that donation. And then that's win, win, win. The last win is we win, the company. Mm -hmm. We make some money too. You know, although we only take 14%, mm -hmm. which is a right. uh, far cry from what the big publishers. So I'm very excited about this. I think it's I think it's a, definitely a need in the marketplace. 
Uh, we're just getting started, so maybe I'll come back on your show six months and give you a progress report. But, awesome. Uh, That'll be awesome. And um, what I'll do is I'll grab that uh, URL from you and uh, put it in the show notes. So I would appreciate uh, so, that. Yeah, so that people can um, uh, check it out. Okay, awesome. So thank you again, Marvin, uh, for sharing uh, all your wisdom and experience with us. Um, all the entrepreneurs and professionals in our audience, uh, I thank you all for joining us uh, for this uh, for this amazing interview, and uh, hopefully you got a lot of value out of this. Thank you all. Thanks. Bye now. Bye. So again, I'm Manoj Agarwal, and thanks a lot for joining us on the Bootstrapping Your Dreams show. I'm guessing there are a lot of Type A ambitious personalities in the audience today. And you guys are always busy thinking about your next big move, your next plan to conquer the world. I know, because I am also constantly trapped inside my own head. To avoid stress and live a healthy and happy life, I highly recommend Ziva Online Meditation Course. This course is taught by world-renowned meditation teacher Emily Fletcher. Trust me, meditation has been scientifically proven to reduce stress and heal chronic ailments. So if you want to learn meditation, then you would want to check out this course for sure. I can vouch for it. It helped me tremendously. Go to go.tetranoodle.com slash Z1. That's go.tetranoodle.com slash Z number one. And now I'd like to invite you to check out my software consulting services and professional training programs at www.tetranoodle.com. We provide world-class consulting services on anything related to technology and software. And we are growing very fast in the areas of education and professional training for software and IT engineers. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes to get automatic episode updates for our Bootstrapping Your Dreams show. And finally, please take a minute to leave us an honest review and rating on iTunes. They really help us out when it comes to the ranking of the show and I make it a point to read every single one of the reviews we get. Thanks for listening. Stay happy and curious. Have a great day.